This talk is about efficiently exploring big data system configuration for better performance. We'll be discussing a tool called Onyx. My name is Rahul Krishna, and this work was done in collaboration with Chong Tang, Kevin Sullivan, and by Shakiri. The use of data processing frameworks like Hadoop and Spark have become a de facto standard for developing data intensive applications. But with their ubiquity and popularity, there come several challenges. The primary challenge is that these frameworks are highly configurable and developers seldom use these configurability instead relying on off the shelf default. And this problem is exacerbated by the fact that the configuration space is combinatorially large and the configuration options often exhibit non-trivial interactions between one another. A typical solution to solve this problem is to make use of a machine learning framework as shown here. It starts by randomly sampling certain configurations, asserting their validity to make sure that they're valid. And for all the valid configurations, we would measure the performance, uh, train a machine learning model, and then use this machine learning model to predict the best configuration. Now, this approach has a number of challenges. Uh, and it's because of random sampling. The random sampling tends to spend a significant amount of time exploring suboptimal regions of the configuration space. And for every additional sample that needs to be gathered, we would have to spend considerable time and uh, money to gather these samples. Uh, ML models that are built with a limited number of random samples also tend to be severely biased. So in this work, we ask if we can do better than random sampling. And our strategy is to devise uh, a smarter sampling approach compared to what exists in the current state of the art. Now, to do this, we need to understand what the goal of sampling is. The goal of sampling, random or otherwise, is to estimate the expression shown here. Uh, in other words, we want to find a configuration C that maximizes the probability of having a better performance um, given the available configuration options we have. Uh, in this expression, Y is the performance and C is the configuration. Now, due to the vastness of the configuration space, uh, it's easy to understand that a random draw is unlikely to find a configuration that can maximize the performance. In order to overcome this challenge, we can um, use other sampling strategies rather than uh, random approaches. And one such approach is called a Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling. The key insight of Markov chain Monte Carlo is that instead of sampling from the unknown distribution, P of Y given configuration, we can instead sample from a surrogate distribution, Q of Y given C. So for every new configuration um, we've generated at time uh, CT plus one, we would reflect on the previous configuration uh, generated at time T to decide whether or not to keep the new configuration. And this decision is made with the help of what's known as an acceptance probability that's given by the expression here. This acceptance probability is parameterized by the ratio of the current configuration and the past configuration. Of the current configuration, uh, Q of Y given C of T plus one is greater or better than the past configuration, then the ratio is greater than one and the acceptance probability is always equal to one, which means that we always keep the new configuration uh, if it's better than the previous configuration in terms of its performance. On the other hand, if the new configuration is worse than the previous configuration, then the ratio tends to be less than one and we accept new configurations with a probability of A, which is less than one. Now, this means that if the new configuration is significantly worse, then there is a very small chance that we, we would accept the new configuration. But this also means that even when the configuration that's newly generated is worse than the previous configuration, we do keep them with a non-zero probability, thereby improving the diversity of the sample space. Now, traditionally, Markov chain Monte Carlo method usually uses an arbitrary distribution to generate the next sample. Uh, this means that the uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo approaches may take an arbitrarily long amount of time to converge. Now, in order to ex expedite the convergence, we use an evolutionary search strategy to generate new configurations. And this is quite straightforward in that we use an initial population of n greater than one configurations, and then we randomly choose a subset of initial configurations. Now, for each randomly chosen subset, we generate a new configuration, C of T plus one, by applying a mutation and or crossover operations. And once we apply these two operations, we get a set of new configurations, which we then use the acceptance criteria to determine if you want to keep the new configuration or discard them. Putting this all together, um, we have an entire framework for Cornix as shown here. So we have three distinct phases. In the first phase, we start with the configuration space and apply a dimensionality reduction to refine the configuration space. And the purpose of this approach uh, or this, this step is to ensure that we don't 
uh, change configurations that have no impact on performance. Trivial options like local host name or file paths uh, and so on usually get filtered out in this phase. Now, once we have a set of configurations that we can reasonably modify, we then apply evolutionary Markov chain in Monte Carlo in the second phase. Uh, in this step, we draw certain samples, we apply mutation and crossover to generate new configurations. Once the new configurations have been generated, uh, we use the configuration checker to, in, to ensure that the newly generated configurations are valid. In this phase, we discard any invalid configuration samples, and then we measure the performance for the newly generated configurations. Once we have a set of new configurations uh, whose um, performance have been measured, we then use the acceptance criteria to determine if we want to keep the new configuration or discard them. If we choose to keep the new configuration, we update the best configuration seen so far, and we repeat this entire process until the budget is exceed exceeded. Now, in order to evaluate Connex, we use the high bench benchmark suite for Hadoop and Spark. Uh, in this suite, uh, we use three distinct workload sizes, small, which has file sizes of 320 MB, large, uh, whose size is 3.2 gigabytes, and, for, and huge, uh, where the file size is 320 gigabytes gigabytes. And for each of these workloads and also the job types, we measure latency using one clock time as the measure of performance. In terms of different job types, we use um, sort, word count, data sort, and we also use certain web search workloads like nudge indexing and page rank. In order to evaluate if the newly generated configuration or the best configuration discovered so far, um, we use what's known as gain. The gain measures the percentage improvement over the default configurations, uh, as shown by this expression here. Uh, and, and in accordance to this expression, a large positive gain indicates that the performance has improved over the default, and a negative gain would indicate that there is a performance deterioration. In order to evaluate our approach, we ask and answer four research questions. The first research question asks how much improvement uh, Connex offers over the default of the shelf formulations of these frameworks. And the second research question, we ask if Connex can scale up when exposed to larger workloads. In the third research question, um, we explore if Connex can scale out across different jobs. And finally, we ask if Connex can, how Connex compares with current machine learning based approaches. In terms of the performance over default, we observe that Connex offers significant improvement over the default. As highlighted by the red boxes here, uh, we notice that the improvement over default can be up to 30% in Hadoop and up to 10% in Spark across all the workloads and job types. In the second research question asks if Connex can scale up when exposed to larger workloads. Uh, and again, we notice that Using Connex on small workloads can act as surrogates to generate configurations that can directly be used for large and huge workloads with a significant improvement in performance. As shown again by the red boxes, uh, we notice a performance gain of up to 20% in Hadoop and configurations discovered with small workloads are used for large workloads. And for Spark, we observe a performance gain of up to 6% and as high as 16% for certain job types. And in the third research question, we wanted to explore if Connex can scale out across different jobs. And the key intuition behind this question was to understand if a configuration found for a specific job type, such as word count, can be reused for a completely different job type, such as sort, terasort, or so on. And again, we find that Connex does scale out across different job types. Um, we observe that in every case, using a configuration uh, for one job type, such as works word count has um, a greater than zero performance improvement over all the other job types. And this was a trend that was observed for every job across both Hadoop and Spark. Uh, and the key takeaway here is that Connex does find solutions that are reusable across both different workloads and different job types. And in the final research question, we wanted to evaluate how the best configuration discovered with Connex compares with current machine learning based approaches. And as shown here, we compared Connex with genetic algorithms, random search, and a machine learning based uh, approach, which is shown in red. And again, for each workload and job type, we observe that Connex offers noticeable performance or latency gains over both the current state of the art approaches as well as uh, genetic and Thank you. Hi, everyone. 
Welcome. If you're just joining us, uh, this is the session on performance modeling of highly configurable software systems. Uh, my name is Carolyn Seaman. I'm from UMBC in Baltimore in the United States, and I'm here with Raul, who was the presenter you just heard, who is ready for your questions. Um, so please, if you have a question for Raul, please put it in the chat. And while you're doing that, I have a question or two that, uh, to get us started, okay? So Raul, I was wondering, um, I have a big picture question, okay? So, so not very specifically about your work, but big picture. And I wanna know why, why would you say that this is an important problem? What, what group of people, what population of people benefits from these improvements that you're proposing and in what context? Right, uh, that's, that's a good question. So um, in terms of why this is a problem, um, a lot of modern software systems like Hadoop and Spark that I just uh, discussed, they have a massive configuration space. And many of the research in this area um, builds machine learning models that require some kind of sample from this vast configuration space, which is also heavily constrained. And uh, the, the current approach is to kind of randomly sample this configuration space to build models. And, uh, and like I mentioned, if, if we do that, we tend to be severely biased towards specific configurations and their impact on, on performance. So approaches like uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo methods uh, are more um, efficient at exploring the configuration space and giving a more representative sample set so we can build better configuration models uh, to make to make these predictions. And that's that's why it's quite important. Does that mm -hmm. answer Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Um, we have a question in the chat from Heng Li, uh, who says, hello, interesting work. Congratulations. Um, I have two questions. Um, so I'll, I'll do the two questions separately, OK, for you. Uh, the first question is, how can Connex be extended for dynamic optimization, that is, finding optimal configurations while the system is serving real workloads, varying workloads, varying workload types? So this question pertains to um, sampling system is running. Um, so the, right now, um, the, the way we run Connex is, in a sense, dynamic, because what happens is we find a configuration, we find a new one, and then we run the system again with that new configuration, and then decide to uh, keep it or discard that configuration. So in order to extend it for dynamic optimization, I would we would just have to add some additional context to Connex when it does the uh, generation process for the next configuration. And in that way, um, you know, you can dynamic, dynamically con, um, reconfigure based on what's happening right now. Uh, this was more offline. We didn't probe the system after we generated the new configuration, but it can easily be added to the configuration space. I mean, the algorithm as in when it generates new configurations. Okay, thanks. And then um, the second part of Heng Li's, uh question is, um, in each search step, how do you choose the candidate points for the next move? Right. So we define what's known as a surrogate distribution. So in our work, we use a Gaussian distribution because of maximum entropy criteria. Um, and so based on the Gaussian distribution, we randomly generate a, a new candidate. Uh, and this distribution tends to evolve as we generate new configurations and we decide to keep them or discard them. And that's another key point. So once we generate a random configuration, if it's bad, uh, then we tend uh, to not keep them because of the acceptance criteria that, we, that we've defined. Uh, and once we start generating better configurations, we keep them more in our sample set. And in, in that sense, the distribution also improves and makes it more likely for us to generate better configurations as the algorithm proceeds. Okay, thanks. Um, so what are the next steps in this line of work? Right. Well, um, one of the key things that we're looking at right now is this is somewhat of a black, black box approach in that we don't really know the internals. And we saw a lot of papers on white box testing uh, in, in this session. And uh, we are hoping that we can integrate Connex with a more white box approach wherein we generate configurations not based on some um, assumed distribution, but based on how the program behaves and using that information to kind of guide the configuration towards specific regions of the program space and not just, uh, you know, like a black box approach of just generating configurations. 
and we think that would be a very interesting addition to the council. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. Um, so actually, Hengli has a follow up to their previous question. Yeah. Um, so the next move can be theoretically very, quote unquote, far from the current point. Is that right? No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's where the acceptance probability comes in. So if the, the next move is very far, then the acceptance probability would be extremely low. So the chances of us keeping the configuration is very low. But that doesn't mean we don't keep them. Uh, to improve sample diversity, we do keep them, but, a, but with a very low probability of that happening. Um, all right, any other questions from the audience? Let's put them in the chat. Um, if not, what we'll do is, is we'll end the Q&A session here, but, but if you um, are interested in talking a little more with Raul about his work, um, and in about the four minutes at the end of the, the end of the Q&A session, there will be a pop-up box to go to the discussion room. Raul will be there and we'll be um, able to have more of a discussion one-on-one uh, -on -one with you if you'd like to do that. So um, I don't see any more questions. So at this point, we will end the Q&A. Thank you very much, Raul. Thank you to our audience. This is the end of the session on um, performance modeling of highly configurable software systems. Um, enjoy the rest of the conference, everybody. And thank you again. Bye. Thank you.